This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. What if you can run AI models on very low memory devices like microcontrollers? So that is going to be the topic which I'm going to discuss about. So the researchers at MIT have come up with a new technique which enables on-device training of machine learning models on edge devices like microcontrollers which have very limited memory. So this could allow edge devices to continually learn from new data, eliminating data privacy issues while also enabling user customization. Okay. So for example, they've given an idea of a keyboard, a smart keyboard, which could, uh, you can train a model on a smart keyboard and this could enable the keyboard to continually learn from the user's writing. But this kind of training typically requires much memory. Right. It is also done using powerful computers at a data center before the model is deployed onto a device. This process is costly and it also raises privacy issues regarding user data must be sent to a central server. This is where the researchers at MIT and MIT IBM Watson AI lab, they have developed a new technique which enables on device training use, using less than quarter of a megabyte of memory. Other solutions typically require 500 MB of memory, but uh, this solution, okay, they are able to do it within 256 kilobyte of capacity of most microcontrollers. So that is the whole idea over here. So what they have developed uh, is a technique, right? So uh, it has been disclosed in this paper as well. So let's go to this paper. Okay. So to uh, deploy a training on device training on a small microcontroller with only 256 KB of memory. They have come up with a technique called as quantization aware scaling, which calibrates the gradient scales and stabilizes quantized training. Okay. So this, uh, and another one is to reduce the memory footprint. They have proposed something called sparse update. To skip the gradient computation of less important sub layers and sub tensors. Okay. So currently the challenges for training with such low memory devices are the quantized graphs of neural networks are hard to optimize due to mixed bit precision and lack of normalization. The limited hardware resource does not allow to full backward computation. Okay. So that is what this framework overcomes using quantization aware scaling and sparse update. And they also implemented a lightweight training system called tiny training engine. We'll go into it, what it means. Okay. So what they say is that one way of reducing memory of your uh, neural network algorithms is actually something called as quantization. Okay. Whereby if you have a floating point 32 linear layer like this, right? You can get a int 8 quantized counterpart. So basically you are reducing the uh, uh, from float to integer and you are reducing the memory footprint like this, right? By casting this, uh, you know, the floating point calculation into integer 8 calculation like this, okay? Where you have this uh, equation where the weight becomes int 8, int 8 bias is still floating point 32 and you have something called as a scaling floating point scaling factor S over here, which is used to project the results back into int 8 range. Okay. And then you can compute the gradient update in this form. Okay. Where you have the weight uh, in int 8 and you have this learning rate and you have the gradient computed. Okay. So this is how you do quantization. But what they say is that this kind of quantization has some issues. Okay. Uh, so when the optimizing a quantized graph, the accuracy is lower compared to the floating point counterpart. Okay. They hypothesis that the quantization process distorts the gradient update. Okay. So that is what uh, happens when you, obviously there will be a reduction in accuracy and uh, other metrics when you go from say the full floating point to int 8, right? Floating point 32 int 8. Okay. So they have come up with this new method called quantization aware scaling. Okay. Where they have given a specific equation over here on how the gradients are updated. And for this particular quantization factor, they also have a corresponding equation over here. 
So this is the this equation specifies how they do it. Okay, you can go into the details later in this paper. But the idea over here is that they have introduced something called as quantization aware scaling. Okay, it is a hyperparameter free learning rate scaling rule. Okay, so that is one other thing. So the next thing what they have done is memory efficient sparse update. Okay, so what they are proposing is to sparsely update the layers and tensors. So in generally when you are doing back, back propagation in neural networks, you will update all the layers right all the weights all the biases what they are proposing over here is that we will only sparsely update certain layers certain weights certain biases right so in this way they identify in this neural network which are the important weights and biases which needs to be updated and only update those when you are doing a back propagation you are not updating the full network okay so for that they use something called as contribution analysis and they look at only what if we fully update the bias, uh, full update. This is basically your normal neural network, right? What if only do bias only update? Then they are calling sparse layer update, sparse tensor update, and they are comparing the performances over here. What they say is that bias update, the accuracy generally goes higher as most layers are updated, but plateau soon. For updating the weight of a specific layer, the latter layers appear to be more important. The first pointwise convolution in an inverted bottleneck block appears to be more important and the gains are bigger with more channels updated. The automated selection based on the contribution analysis is effective. The actual downstream accuracy shows a positive correlation with the accuracy over here. That is what they say with respect to this sparse tensor update. I find this concept really uh, interesting in the sense that if you need not update the full network and you just need to update certain parts of the network when you are doing the training it is really a very efficient way of doing training right the larger the network uh, this idea becomes quite efficient okay so that is what they have explained over here in terms of the sparse layer tensor update so they have some pruning techniques uh, they are quite successful for achieving sparsity which have been discussed in earlier papers so instead of pruning weights for inference they prune the gradient during back propagation and update the model sparsely that is the idea over here because there is a tight memory uh, budget we skip the update of less important parameters to reduce memory usage and computation cost so here the challenge is to identify which are the important parameters which needs to be updated okay so for that they have something called as contribution analysis okay we find the contribution of each parameter weight or bias to downstream accuracy given a convolution network we measure the accuracy improvement from the biases, the improvement of updating the last k biases, that is bias update only, weights, improving the uh, uh, weights, the improvement of updating the weight of one extra layer compared to bias only update. An example of this uh, is what is they've given over here is in figure four. Okay, let's go over over here. So here they have talked about actually, yeah, what I explained before on bias update generally higher as more layers are updated but plateau soon so it is about this that is what they have given over here and uh, so they have an optimization problem to find over here and if you solve this optimization problem you are able to find out which are the important weights and biases or layers which needs to be updated in a sparse manner so finally they came up with this tiny training engine okay so the idea is any neural network is a forward a graph right so in that graph, uh, the engine traces the forward graph for a given model and derives the corresponding backward graph at compile time. So the backward graph is your basically your uh, back propagation graph. Okay. So the red cycle denotes the gradient descent operators, basically the gradient descent. To reduce memory requirements, what they do is nodes related with frozen weights, these are light nodes, are removed from backward computation. Okay. Again, to minimize memory footprint, the gradient descent operators are reordered to be interlaced with the backward computations. That is what is done over here shown in yellow. So then the TTE, basically this engine, compiles forward and backward graphs using code generation and deploys training. So these are static processes which happens and only in runtime this update happens. So this is during compile time. Okay. So that's how they have improved this, uh, you know, they've reduced the footprint 
okay so that is the uh, tiny training engine so there is compile time differentiation and code generation so it offloads the auto differentiation from the runtime to compile time generating a static backward graph which can be pruned and optimized okay that is the idea over here so uh, they also do backward graph pruning for sparse update okay uh, the details you can read through this paper so the, now the question is that does this really work all right so they also have a small demo of a cnn algorithm deployed on you know mcu net deployed on a particular downstream task over here to do uh, you know percent detection so they have a demo video sure interesting demo video over here training on small so if you look over here uh, it is for detecting a person so this is camera uh, this is a microcontroller with the camera and the image is shown problem and uh, this is a person detection so if there is a person in the image so it will show that there is a person sometimes the accuracy is less but so sometimes it shows the accuracy, the accuracy is correct get him better right and with training basically this is the initial the uh, rounds of training of so with some low. amount of Those training are, it is now getting better and it is showing the now we can get accuracy over accuracy. here right so this works but basically that's what they claim over here and uh, yeah this is an quite an interesting method what i found out interesting is what if we can use some of these techniques um, not just for microcontrollers, but can we take these techniques outside and use it for reducing the memory footprint of our large models, right? And improving its, uh, you know, performance. So that is what has been explained over here. Mm, and if you go to the related work, they talk about the other, uh, you know, networks such as PyTorch, TensorFlow, MXNet, JAX. They depend on host language Python, and typically they require larger uh, memory footprints right but there are inference libraries like tf light tvm mnn m ncn uh, tensor rt and all they provide lightweight runtime evidence but do not support training it's only for inference okay so that is what the uh, there is this tiny deep learning on microcontroller uh, controllers also there are other tiny engines which have been developed but they also are only for inference but not training so they claim that this is the first system for actually training on microcontrollers and uh, they say that it also supports modern CNNs for real life applications. Slowly they want to move into other modalities like audio and text, right? Using RNNs, transformers, etc. So this tiny on-device learning, um, this method helps to protect the privacy on sensitive data like healthcare. Uh, but this needs to be worked on uh, basically on other models and then they have to see how you know this can be uh, put on. Uh, real microcontrollers with real life use cases okay but i find the techniques which have been explained over here to be quite interesting and probably it would require a couple of rounds of uh, reading through this paper again and again to fully understand the methods but at a high level uh, they are making use of this sparse layer update uh, sparse tensor update as well to you know improve the memory footprint during back propagation and as well as quantization aware scaling okay i think this quantization aware scaling can be used uh, even uh, in other uh, models like say transformer models where uh, quantization is used to reduce the memory footprint uh, probably this quantization aware scaling technique can be used there if they come out with some kind of a library or you know if we can implement this i hope you like this short video on uh, how you can train machine learning models on as less memory as 256 KB as claimed in this paper. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe to the channel. See you in another video. Happy learning.